In this video, we are going to be learning about free fall and gravity. We're going to start this out with a question. Which will hit the ground first if dropped from the same height at the same time? A bowling ball or a golf ball? So think about if you know the answer or not. The correct answer to this question is that a bowling ball and a golf ball will hit the ground at the same time, assuming that air resistance is negligible. Negligible means that you can just neglect it, doesn't matter all that much. That's because a bowling ball and a golf ball accelerate towards the earth at the same rate. This is called free fall. Free fall is the motion of a body when the only force acting on it is gravity. This definition is really important because normally true free fall doesn't happen on Earth because there is always air resistance. You can create a vacuum by sucking the air out of a certain area, so in that case there would be free fall because there is no air resistance. There is also no atmosphere on, say, the moon. So on the moon, an object would be in true free fall because the only object, the only force acting on the object would be gravity. So in the absence of air resistance, all objects accelerate towards Earth at the same rate regardless of mass. This number is called little g, and the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. So why doesn't the acceleration change? Why is the acceleration the same for all objects? The reason has to do with Newton's second law. So I hope you agree with this statement. A falling 10 kilogram boulder feels 10 times the force of gravity than a one kilogram stone. However, this does not mean 10 times the acceleration. That's because we must also consider the object's masses. So 10 times as much force acting on 10 times as much mass will produce the same acceleration. So basically, there's more force acting on the object, but it takes more force to get it to accelerate because it has more mass. Let's take a look at this in terms of a visual and math. So in this visual, we've got a big force and a big mass. That's, that's our boulder. So it would be G. And we're assuming this isn't a vacuum, so that there's no air resistance on this feather. In this picture, we have a little f and a little m, and them divided by each other is G, or 9.8 meters per second squared. So the ratios of force to mass are the same in either case can also think about this in terms of math. So the force acting on a 10 kilogram boulder is equal to 980 newtons. We know from Newton's second law F equals ma if we solve that for a we know that A is equal to F over M. So the acceleration of a 10 kilogram boulder will be A is equal to F over M equals 980 divided by 10 equals 9.8 meters per second squared. The force acting on the 1 kilogram stone will be 9.8 newtons. The acceleration of the 1 kilogram stone will be A, A equals F over M equals 9.8 divided by 1 equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, the ratios are the same. Now we need to talk about the gravitational force. Newton's law of universal gravitation is that all objects exert a gravitational force on all other objects. So right now I'm sitting at my computer. Right now I am exerting a gravitational force on my computer. Now you might ask, why isn't the computer being pulled towards me? The reason is because neither me nor my computer has very much mass. So if I were to gain weight, I would exert more of a gravitational force on my computer. Now what if I were to push my computer further away from me? Well, then I would have less of a gravitational force acting on the computer. 
So the bigger an object's mass, the more pull it has. And the further away it is, the less pull it has. And this is known as the inverse square law. The gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between two objects. So let's say at first objects are one meter away. They would exert some gravitational force on each other. And let's say they move two meters away from each other. Then they would exert one-fourth of the force. And the reason is, is because 2 squared equals 4. So you would do 1 over 2 squared equals 1 fourth. So again, the further away it is, the less pull it has, and that decreases drastically. It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So remember, inversely proportional means when one thing increases, the other thing gets smaller. Or when one thing decreases, the other thing gets bigger. So when distance increases, the force will get smaller. Now this little symbol here means proportional to. So what this shows us is that the, for the gravitational force acting on two masses is proportional to the two masses multiplied by each other, but inversely proportional to the distance between them squared. Now let's take a look at this. So the gravitational force between A and B, it is less here because the objects have smaller masses. In this picture, the gravitational force is bigger here because the objects are closer together. Now let's look at some pictures and I want you to tell me which gravitational force, force is larger. You don't need to draw these in your notebooks, but you should be answering them in your own head before I go over them. So, is the gravitational force larger between the red guys or the blue guys? So think about it for a second. The gravitational force is larger between the red guys. I'd like you to answer why in your head. The reason why is because the red guys are closer together. All right, is the gravitational force larger between the purple guys or the yellow guys? Well, you should have said that they are larger between the yellow guys because they're about the same distance apart, but this yellow one is much bigger than this purple one. So this is gonna exert much more of a pull on this guy. How about here? Well, the answer to this one is that you don't really have enough information to answer it. The reason why is because these are further apart, but this one has a lot more mass. So you could say that the force is pretty large because of this large mass. Now in the pink one, the pink one's mass is much smaller, but they're much closer together. So again, for these, you don't really have enough information. When we talk about gravity, it's very important to talk about weight. So weight is a measure of the gravitational force exerted on an object. This is different from mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. So let's talk about my calculator. My calculator has a certain amount of mass. Okay, That mass is not going to change. It is an inherent property of my calculator. If I take that calculator to the moon, it will have the same amount of mass. However, if my calculator is on the moon, my calculator will weigh less because there is less gravitational force on the moon. To calculate weight, you would do mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So let's do some examples. So what is the weight of these? So for a 20 kilogram box, you would do 20 times 9.8 
196. Are we done with this problem? No, we are not. We need to add in units. How about two kilogram book? So we would do two times 9.8 and you get 19.6. What am I forgetting here? Units. The units are newtons. What about an 80 kilogram man? So you would do 80 times 9.8 and you get 784 newtons. So as I was already mentioning, weight is different at different locations. Weight is actually different at different points on Earth and on different planets because g, or the acceleration due to gravity, is different. So why would g be 9.77, which is less than 9.8, on the top of Mount Everest? So see if you can come up with an answer. We'll, we will talk about that next class. Make sure you do your summary for your Cornell notes.